Okay, one of the last ones I want to show you is the beagle bone. Now, the beagle bone's rather new to me. I basically got it because, well, the beagle bone black, let me be specific first of all. I basically got it because of the comparison paper that you guys are going to be working with and the fact that it compared very well with the Raspberry Pi as well as the Galileo. As a matter of fact, of the three, I would say that the Beagle Bone was second only to the Raspberry Pi. And even then, if you're just interested in more power, more power, more power, well, the benefit to the Raspberry Pi over the Beagle Bone is really only cost because power is definitely on the side of the Beagle Bone and it's comparable to the Raspberry Pi with power consumption and other important factors. The other thing about the Beagle Bone is it is also Arduino compatible, directly Arduino compatible, although the pinouts are a little bit different. But it's just, it's great that we have all these options is what it really comes down to, so who cares? It's a matter of what application you want to use it for. Now, I will point out one thing for certain. You do have a USB, both a micro and a standard, as well as a single slot, which is underneath here for the Beagle Bone Black. It uses a micro SD card as well. It has those advantages. It has the GPIO ports here, as well as others over here. A tremendous number of ports for you to have pin connections, wired connections to other components, etc. The key to the Beagle Bone is it's, well, I guess you could say American. Now, unlike the Intel Galileo, which was designed by Intel for Intel, essentially with Arduino's blessing, because they wanted something that they could essentially cre uh, not control, but certainly have an influence in, which the Beagle Bone and the Raspberry Pi are not directly involved with Arduino. They're just compatible. The other thing that's interesting about this beyond the Arduino aspect is the Beagle Bone, like the Raspberry Pi, is an ARM based system. Now I've said it before that the ARM is fabless. What does that mean? Well, it means ARM is copyrighted. It's got uh, patents. It's a company in every sense of the world except one. It never builds its own chips. It actually license out, licenses out its technology to other chip manufacturers. Now in the case of the uh, Raspberry Pi, that ARM chip is done by Broadcom. And Broadcom being a British company and one of the employers of one of the Raspberry Pi's early developers was a natural fit the Beagle Bone, I'm not familiar with the background of it as much, but I suspect the Beagle Bone was designed to allow Texas Instruments to have its ARM solution built into a board like the Raspberry Pi. The original Beagle Bone came out fairly quickly, um, about the same time as the Raspberry Pi, and the Beagle Bone Black, which is an enhancement over the standard Beagle Bone, which ironically is on a white board with black lettering, an unusual circumstance, is uh, similarly been rapidly prototyped up. <clears throat> it has some incredibly robust support for people who like it. Uh, it they they're you're going to get in arguments essentially if you start having preferences for one device over another and why you spent your money. But the point is you spent your money. You're using this for something. You're going to have your own ideas of why one is better than the other. But what it comes down to is they all have strengths and weaknesses. Now you may have already noticed as I've gone over this real estate with what we've looked at with the Galileo as well as the Raspberry Pi what do you not see here? HDMI? Nope, there it is. So you've got the micro card as well as USB as well as HDMI. How do I know this? Well gee, right there, HDMI. So it actually uses a standard 
kind of slot, a jack if you will, and it goes on ahead and allows HDMI through a different system. It's not direct HDMI because notice that this other otherwise says right down here USB host. So where is the HDMI? Well let's look. We have the micro SD card, HDMI, then USB. That clearly is the USB, but here's where it gets interesting. This right here is the micro HDMI connection. See it right there? You might think that's USB. It is not. Kind of cool, huh? So you still have that video connection out going to a direct monitor, if you will, and that gives you the ability to essentially dedicate this as, or have this as a dedicated device. A um, couple things it doesn't do that the Raspberry Pi does. It has a little bit more RAM, or similar amounts of RAM. It uses separate Kingston chips there and there for its RAM. The ARM chip is completely encased in there. This is most likely for the Ethernet, the NX chip. But like I said, this one's a little new to me. So let's go through some of the areas on this board and take what you've already looked at and compare it to what you're seeing here now. Why would you use this? What is the point of this board? Okay, so let's look a little closely. What do we have here? We have on this side of the board, and I'm gonna pause the video for a moment because I need to get this out of here uh, and I'm not quite ready for that. Let me just take a moment while I'm talking about it. But the Beagle Bone is much like a lot of these boards going to be a multi-layered board so it actually has components that interconnect at multiple levels and I just got the board out it's just a little tight on this particular case so here's the opposite side of the beagle bone what do we have in here there is a micro USD port this will allow you to compare directly that's what the micro excuse me not the micro SD the micro USB port looks like this very distinct shape if you go over here micro HDMI see it distinct shape it's right there looks a lot like a micro USB now let's look at this compared to the HDMI port that you get on a standard Raspberry Pi okay very similar but you need to have these distinctions understood before you start playing around with these devices and that's part of the fun of it actually this is where the hardware you have to understand the hardware just to use these things um, we're not going to get so much in the electronics of it but if you'd like to see some of the real estate here we have capacitors and resistors and everything else oh my you'll notice that C 146, 144, 107, 108, 115, those are all capacitors. And then R is for resistor. So there are a few resistors and capacitors on here, to say the least. Here's your micro SD card slot. It actually has a micro SD card in it. So you push in, it holds it, push out, releases. Very simple. Okay. As we mentioned, there's your HDMI, clearly labeled on the other side here. Not obvious, but it's clearly labeled. There it is. You can see it there. The micro SD card, the USB host to plug directly into your computer, 10100 Ethernet, dedicated 5 volt, which is optional. You can use the USB host as well. You just can't expect to plug it into your USB and then run HDMI. You're going to have to have that 5 volt power, which is a basically the same as the connector for the Galileo. Uh, they're both 5 volts. They might have different amperages. As long as the amperage of the connector, otherwise affectionately known as a wall ward, that you're using is rated for 5 volts and it has the same polarity, meaning that the barrel shape has a pin that is either positive or negative on the middle and that the outside or inside of the barrel, if you will, but the outside barrel of the uh, plug that you're using 
has the proper polarity, negative to positive, ring and tip, they call it, then it really doesn't matter as long as they're 5 volts and as long as they meet the minimum amperage requirements measured in microamperes or in just amperes, uh, you'll either see like 0.7 or 700 milliamps. They're the same thing. That's typically the minimum you need. And if the device draws only 300 milliamps, it doesn't matter if you plug a 700 milliamp adapter in. But this is another thing. You're going to need accessories to make these things work. For instance, keyboard, video, mouse. You can connect, in the case of the Galileo and the BeagleBone, you can connect through this USB host. And that USB host port allows you to go on ahead and directly power and communicate with another piece of software on your computer to directly, uh, essentially directly network, if you will, with the computer through your Windows system or using software that runs on the Windows system. In the case of the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi is a standalone system. It's not directly intended to be connected to another computer, even though there are multiple ways you can do just that. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we have our first in-person class next week. We'll talk about connecting and stuff like that. Again, the Beagle Bone is just to illustrate that there are more than even a couple ways to do what we're doing in this class. To give you an idea of some of the things that it has, as I've said, it's got the processor itself, the power connector. It actually uses uh, 500 milliamps or better. It uh, has an Ethernet port. It has one thing I wish the Raspberry Pi did for certain, and that is a reset button, which you will find right over here. You probably saw it earlier. Clearly marked with a microscope. You'll also see these little LEDs that light up. When you first light it up, uh, they actually have different colors that they can cycle through, and they make like a rainbow pattern going back and forth. It's pretty cool. But that's just the basic programming that's built into it. It also has its expansion headers, which that's what these are. You'll notice there's pin 1, pin 2. So what happens is in this case you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You alternate all the way down to the other end where you have pin 45 going to pin 46. Some other headers will actually go pin 1 and travel down, counting up, and then they will go from this end so this would be like, let's say, pin, well, it's pin 45. So if you divide that in half, you'll find there are 23 pins here. So this would be pin 23, and then you would hop over to where 46 is, and it would be 24. And then this would go all the way up to the other side, 24 to 46 in this case. But these headers are clearly marked. That's so you don't make exactly that mistake, pin 1 and 2 there pin 1 and 2 there. You've also got, as I mentioned, the, uh, the mini USB port, as well as a micro SD card slot, micro HDMI, um, serial header, the onboard flash memory, which the onboard flash memory itself is actually one of these two chips. It's actually this chip right here, the Kingston. And then the other Kingston memory chip is the RAM you use. And that's kind of nice, because you can load something up into here. The processor uses its own internal registers, as well as the RAM here. And you're keeping what it runs off of, which you can load permanently here, running through here, to run the RAM there. And then that's essentially it. There is a boot switch as well. I think I, I should mention that. Something else the Raspberry Pi doesn't have. That boot switch is actually down there. It's on the opposite end, thank God. So they have this switch here, which is a boot switch, and this switch here, which is a reset switch. What's the difference between them? Essentially, it comes down to if you hold down the boot switch, the Beagle Bone will go back to boot from the micro SD card instead of its flash memory. Nice feature. So it'll boot from the flash card or it'll boot from the uh, 
excuse me, the SD card or the flash memory. It defaults to the flash memory built in, but it will do the SD card as well. Pretty cool. And then, if you compare that to the uh, Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi requires this card. There is no other way to provide any information to this processor with the RAM built into it than through a card that is placed into the Raspberry Pi. Well, that's about it for now. I've got a few other things I'm going to get done for you, but I'm not going to get them done tonight as uh, it's already a little after one and your first class is literally in 13 hours. Uh, I am going to get off here. Chris Carroll will be taking attendance as well as getting you guys introduced to the syllabus and I will be done for the evening uh, here and be back to see you this time next week. Have a good morning, or in your case, afternoon. We will talk at you later.